I am going to be rich. Like there is no way I am gonna end up living a life where that does not happen. And because of this desire of mine, I have poured so much time and energy into reading books about money, into learning the secrets of millionaires, into watching so many videos and reading so many articles on the hacks that rich people use that separate them from the average person. It has also come to my attention the amount of common money mistakes that people are making that is keeping them from a life of wealth. So in this video, I'm gonna spill all of the tea. We are first gonna discuss money mindset because that is so underrated. Then we're going to be talking about money mistakes you need to stop making today. And then in the last chapter, we're going to be talking about rich girl habits to enter your rich girl era. Before we start, don't forget that season two of my podcast, Self Obsessed, is coming out next week. And you can check it out via the link below in the description, along with the pre-order link for my book, which is coming out this summer, which is the ultimate guide to achieving radical self-love. I also have all of my socials linked below in the description, along with my second YouTube channel. But for now, let's get into it. Chapter number one, money mindset. Now, I already already have a video on financial abundance, a complete guide on my channel where I talk a lot about money mindset. So I'm just going to be giving you an overview of that. But if you want this in much more detail, I highly recommend going back to watch that video. Step number one, abundance. You need to master the mindset of money always comes back. Let me tell you a little story. In January, 2023, I treated myself to my first luxury purchase, which was a coach tote bag. And I justified it by saying, I'm going to use it every day because I can put all my camera stuff and my laptop in it. I also got it on sale, but I think it came out to around 200 pounds. And at that point I just graduated. It was a very risky purchase for me. I didn't feel comfortable spending that amount of money. That was January, 2023. Six months later, I was in Paris buying my first Chanel classic fat bag. How crazy is that? And truly, this is all down to my abundance mindset, which allowed me to attract a large amount of money into my life to be able to afford that. So I was so uncomfortable with treating myself to a coach bag, which I needed because I needed a big bag for all of my stuff because I used to fear money. I used to think losing money was a bad thing. And throughout the beginning of 2023, I was doing so much self-education to flip that mindset. And I went from, I can't afford this to how can I afford this? I also started visualizing financial abundance and I found a picture in my Snapchat memories, like around this time in 2023, I like took a selfie and I wrote, I will make six figures in a year. And I found that the other day and I was like, I was nowhere near that. And I can't remember what I was saying to myself that evening, but I was so sure in it. I wrote it down because I knew one day I was going to look back at that. So I was actively manifesting as well. It's also important to stop seeing money as a destination. Cause when you do that, you start putting money on a pedestal, but money isn't on the pedestal. You are on the pedestal. Money is just the currency to get you what will make you happy and what will bring you value into your life. It's nothing to fear. You should actively be trading it and actively be willing to lose it. It brings you value in the form of food and clothing and experiences. And please, 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 most of all, you need to stop speaking your financial scarcity into existence by repeatedly saying, I'm so broke, I can't afford this, I can't do that, I'm never gonna be able to afford that. While that may be true in your case and in your life right now, speaking according to those technicalities keeps you living in technical land. And we don't wanna live in technical land, we wanna live in abundance land. So you need to switch what you're saying even if it's not technically true for the reality you're living right now because we're trying to manifest what we want, not just tolerate and accept what we've been given. So to do this, you need to remove limiting phrases out of your vocabulary. A common one is the word expensive. I don't like using the word expensive because even if something is technically expensive, if I am saying that about something, in my mind, I'm making it out to be unrealistic. I'm making it out to be something that I'm not capable of getting. So if something is technically expensive, it just becomes a goal. It just becomes something that I'm working towards because I'm gonna get it regardless. The reason that these little mindset shifts is so important is because it affects your energetic vibration. And when you start switching what you're saying and when you start switching how you perceive money, your energy will be more aligned to somebody who is wealthy, who has money, who is a millionaire because they think that about money, which is why they have the ability to attract more of it into their life. This also links into the importance of your relationship with money. Like I said, it is simply a currency, it is nothing to fear. You have this low energetic vibration of fear around it and the more that you save it and the more that you cling on to it, you are basically communicating to the universe that you feel like you're never going to have enough of it and whatever you believe, you are going to receive. So you're going to keep manifesting the exact same reality into your life. And speaking of your relationship, with money, this also links into money boundaries. It took me a really long time to establish healthy money boundaries. As soon as my income started to rise, I really struggled with overspending and I was never able to consistently budget and stick to my goal of a monthly spend, which I set in the first place to be able to grow my net worth. If I want to acquire wealth, then it matters more 
how much money I have in investments and assets than meaningless things like a bunch of clothes and expensive items. So I did some research around this and I discovered how useful budgeting apps are. I recently switched to Rise Up because they're not only a budgeting app, but they are a financial well-being app, which I think is really unique and I haven't seen anybody else do on the app store. And this makes it so much easier for you to actually improve your relationship with money and also your energetic vibration around it because you're gonna feel like you have more control over your finances. The app is super easy and simple to use. I I personally love the monthly forecast showing you how much money you're predicted to have or lose plus the budget apps which show you how much money you have left to spend for the rest of the month in each category of your life whether that be grocery shopping bills rent subscriptions etc before using this app I used to go through an entire spreadsheet every single month to calculate what was going in and out and it was way too much work but this app lets you do it all for you it has way more features than any other financial app out there for example you can actually chat to a money expert within the app to gain more clarity on any of your money concerns the app also prioritizes making joint finances much easier for their users, which I personally love because I haven't discovered that feature before and it's gonna make moving in with my boyfriend in three months way easier. Its monthly forecast helps you predict the unpredictable. So you know how your monthly finances are gonna end before the month has even started. And the best part is that Rise Up has been proven to improve customers' cash flow by 530 pounds per month. So if you are ready to finally take control of your finances so that you can enter your rich girl era, then you can sign up to Rise Up via the link below in my description. Chapter two. Stop making these mistakes right now, I beg of you. Step number one, using Klarna or credit card debt, so icky, okay? No, 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 no. If you don't have the money, for it now, you should not be spending it, especially when it comes to stuff like ASOS or makeup hauls, no. Okay, and my rule with everything is unless you can buy three of it, you shouldn't be buying it at all. Using buy now, pay later is not the one. It was just a tactic created by companies to get you to buy more stuff. Don't fall for that trap, I beg of you. Step number two, this is a more niche one, but people who do loads of different things, which then gets rid of their chance to be the best at one thing. Being the best at one thing and being the top of your pile in whatever industry you're in, automatically so much money comes with that, so much wealth, so many partnerships, so many opportunities. But you're telling me you have a nail business and then you have a jewelry business on top of that and then you also do swimming lessons and then you also do this or that. And that is great and that is very honorable and I feel like a lot of people tell you to do so many things at once. I feel like max you should have a job and a side hustle and if you are lucky enough to have done it for a consistent amount of time where you were getting a good amount of money from your side hustle I always believe in the concept of burning the boats which basically means getting rid of your plan b and pouring all of your effort energy and time into plan a so your side hustle for example and I can vouch for this because I did it with my youtube channel I had no money I was a graduate I was living at home with my family and I decided not to apply to any graduate schemes or any jobs which is what all of my friends were doing to give myself six months to pour everything into this and if it didn't work I would go and get a job and guess what it did because the adrenaline and all of the pressure and the fact that there was nothing for me to fall back on made sure that I could make sure that I made this work three I used to stress about money all the time and then when it would come to going to the store to do my weekly food shop I would like obsessively check over the price tag on fruit and I kid you not I went the first two years of university not eating fruit because I thought it was way too expensive. So guess what I lived on? I lived on freezer food. And looking back, I just regret it because it's like, I shouldn't have feared money in that way. In return, I would be getting nutrition and energy to actually be able to work harder in university and be a fully functioning human being. And I just wish I didn't make that mistake because I was basically reinforcing the belief that money was scarce and I was never gonna have enough of it to the point that I wasn't even deserving of basic nutrition. Money mistake number four, staying in the same job for a very, very long time. Now, this is an idea that has been sold to you ever since you started applying for jobs, ever since you were in school, that you should be loyal to your company but the truth is in order to actually make more money over time you should never stay in the same job for more than two years because at the end of the day you have to keep prioritizing increasing your income and i know this because there was recently an article written by forbes which stated people who stay in the same company for more than two years on average will make you earn less over your entire lifetime by 50 percent or more so please start asking for raises and switching jobs very shamelessly step number five stop comparing your life to 
everybody else is because it's either going to make you overspend or create even more scarcity about your own position with money because you think everybody else has so much of it. I'm not saying that financial abundance isn't available and a lot of people have it, that's for sure. But I promise you it's not nearly as many people as you think it is. There are so many people online that have been kind of exposed that they support all of their designer purchases by being in credit card debt. They full on don't even pay their taxes. You don't know how many of their luxury purchases are fake or who's buying it for them, whether it's their partner or their family. While yes, there are people that are generally self-made and are wealthy, it's not every single person from your hometown like social media makes it appear it to be. Trust me, pictures never tell the full story. Please stop assuming that you know other people's financial situation because you never do. It's better to just focus on yourself. For me, I do this by remembering the rule that your rent should never be more than 30% of your income. That is an ideal and that means that you'll be able to save and invest enough. Your rent should not be taking up everything you earn in a month. I know sometimes you can't control it, but if you have been considering, should I stay with my parents for longer or should I move out? Then I'd say play it by that rule to figure out how you're gonna split your income. With this rule of rent being 30% of your income with rent, I also include my monthly bills and my food shop all in one. And for me, it is less than 30% so I can justify living out. Does that mean yes, I could actually afford another bag or a bigger apartment? Yes, but just because you can afford it does not mean that you should buy it. You should always be living below your means. The next step links into what I said before, you can't afford something unless you buy it three times. And you know what, this links into what I just said. A lot of people don't pay attention to this rule, which is why they get themselves into so many financial problems because they'll just about have the money to buy that new Louis Vuitton bag and then they'll go out and buy it. For me, I look at my money like, okay, a percentage of this is gonna to go to tax, so that's not even mine. So then I look at my money after I would have to pay that. Then I take 30% away from my living costs, my rent and all of that. Then I'll take another 20% of my income away for all of my investments. And then whatever I have left, some of it will go to savings and then some of it is mine. I don't look at my entire paycheck and think, oh, I'm fine and I could like spend 50% of this. That is how you get yourself into so much trouble very, very quickly. And then the last money mistake, which is keeping you away from entering your rich girl era is wealthy people do not save. I used to make this mistake a lot where the bigger my bank balance was, the more comfortable I felt because I thought I'm not spending much and I look how much I have more now in my bank account. No, this is not what the wealthy do. And it's because of something called inflation. Your money is always losing its value when it's kept saved in your bank account. And now I have this mindset where if my money goes beyond a certain amount in my bank account, I know something needs to be changed. I know I need to move things around. I know I need to invest more. I know I need to put more into my pension. And if I've already done all of those things then I should be reinvesting it back into my business to then be able to make even more money and I know it's very important to have liquid cash that you know just in case it's a rainy day I actually have a general investment savings account with Lloyd's your banking app a lot of the time will have loads of different options to for you to open a high interest savings account where you can still withdraw instantly whenever you need it so you still have that security but I've already made money on the savings that I put into that account and it's been three weeks Otherwise it would have just been sat in my bank account doing nothing and losing its value. My rule is I'll always have three months of expenses saved in my bank account. After that, it's going into the stock market and it's going to be invested. And this links into chapter number three, rich girl habits. This is where I'm gonna teach you about my investment strategy in depth and a bunch of other hacks that you can use. Hack number one, let's talk about the importance of credit cards. Cause yes, you most definitely should not be getting into credit card debt and thinking is giving you money that you most certainly do not have, but you should be spending on your credit cards with your grocery shop or your clothing shop, all of your monthly expenses to then build up your credit score because you are gonna end up paying it on time and in full every single month. That's what's gonna build up your credit score so then you can buy a house, so then you can rent an apartment. And I highly recommend investing and in getting an Amex card for this, that's American Express. I have the gold one and basically it gives you points on every single purchase which you can then put towards your grocery shop or the clothes that you wanna buy or even flights. And this means that when I do wanna splurge on some clothing, a lot of the time is basically free because all of the points that I gathered from just paying my bills or doing my grocery shop is put towards that. I also heard that apparently if you buy a car from Mercedes, you get like thousands off just from being an Amex customer. And you also get like Deliveroo credit and a bunch of other discounts, which can make the annual fee of having that card very worth it. 
Rich girl hack number two, you have to start small. A lot of the time we see so much wealth in social media and it overwhelms us and that's what fosters the scarcity mindset in the first place. You feel like your financial goals are so far away, you feel like you're never gonna have it like anybody else. Stop thinking about the Birkin, stop thinking about the house, stop thinking about the Chanel bag, no. You need to start from where your position is. So let's say you are a teenager and you've just started making money, your financial goal should be to set up an emergency savings. That's it, that's your first step. And because that's so close to your financial situation, you are more motivated to go out and get it and you know you're gonna get it, which then helps start building up that abundance mindset. Let's say you don't have a job at all because you're studying, then your financial goal is to build up your financial literacy so you're more prepared for when you do get a job. And then if you do have a job, your financial goal should be to start investing 5% of your income every single month to the stock market. And that leads us to investing in the stock market. And I'm gonna share with you guys how I do this. So I use an app called Free Trade. I only started investing in the stock market six months ago. I wish I started earlier. And right here it says I've made 4,800 pounds in the last six months from investing. Yes, I get to invest more than the average person would, but my money has grown and no matter what you're gonna invest, it's also going to grow if you have the right strategy. So I personally invest in a lot of ETFs. That stands for exchange traded funds. This is a basket of stocks. So for example, the S&P 500 is a group of the 500 largest companies in the US, I believe. And if you research this ETF, you'll see a line going right like this because it's very consistent in its growth. Your investments are spread out amongst 500 different companies rather than pouring all of your money into Tesla or Apple, which might plummet down one day. So I'll share with you guys what I invest in. I'm not saying that you should copy this. I'm just here to give you a bit of inspo. So the most amount of money that I've invested is in the S&P 500 because it's low risk, because it's quite predictable. After that, I've invested in Nvidia. That is obviously just a singular stock, but they have grown hugely over the last year, two years, and that has given me a lot of returns. After that, I've invested a lot in Spotify, then Apple, which is actually making a loss right now. But this also leads me onto the point that sometimes your stocks that you invest in are gonna be in the red and you're gonna be making a loss on them, but that is completely normal. And actually reading the book, Girls That Invest, gave me more confidence about this. I highly recommend you guys read that book. It's linked on my Amazon storefront. And it's just that the stock market goes up and down, up and down like this every day, every week, every week, right? But if you look at it over the span of a year, it's still going up. It's just going up and down, up and down. So you should not be pulling your money out, panicking because it went down one day or down one month because it's always gonna pick back up. And the goal of the stock market is to keep your money in that for as long as possible. So even though I've made significant returns on my stocks, I have not taken out any of that money. I want it to be that for at least a decade and that is how you get the most out of it. I've also invested in Shopify, in Elf Cosmetics, and then the FTSE 100, that is a group of the 100 largest companies in the UK, that is also an ETF. Um, then I've invested in Microsoft, TD Bank, there are some stocks that will give you dividends, so that means that you'll make a little bit of money on the side every single month. The more that you invest, the more you're gonna make. Amazon, Meta, and then a few other ETFs but those are like my biggest amount of money, like invested in all of those that I just named. The next rich girl hack is to get a financial advisor. You don't even need to pay them. I don't pay mine. They simply take a percentage of the money you give them to invest and yet you have their financial advice. They tell you how to invest. So you're not stressed about doing the wrong thing. And this has helped me massively. It's helped me invest in my own pension so that I'm setting myself up for retirement. Literally, why not just get somebody else to do the hard work for you and tell you the secrets of what the rich are doing? The next rich girl hack is about investing in housing. Now, this is a very popular opinion that a lot of people say. I personally have not done this. Will I do it one day? Day, potentially but it's not even on my radar right now I've actually been advised not to right now because a lot of people don't understand or see the phantom hidden costs behind investing in real estate I would argue that a business is actually a much better investment than a house because it's a cash rich investment meaning that you can make money from it right now rather than putting so much money into it having to then pay so much tax on it anyway having to worry about when you're gonna get tenants in to rent it out and then you have to wait like 20 years just to make a 
good return on it. However, alternatives of this is setting up an Airbnb business. There are so many um, pros on TikTok on social media that actually sell courses or teach you how to do this. And that is a little bit more lucrative as well as setting up a HMO, which is when you buy a property and then you rent out every single bedroom. But I am not an expert on that. I am just saying, I think it's better, especially when you're in your early twenties to lean towards a business investment to build up that cash to then eventually buy multiple properties if that's how you wish to invest your money. I personally just invest mostly within the stock market. The next rich girl hack is that investing is also for skills. It's not limited to moving your money around places. You yourself are an investment and you need to be doing yourself the favor of soaking up as much financial knowledge as you can to give yourself a better future. This doesn't just go for learning what to do with your money, but it also goes for investing in yourself by learning new skill sets. You can Google and probably click on the first article and learn what the highest income skills are and then watch YouTube videos for free to learn how to do them. Go on to Skillshare to do courses to learn them. Have a mentor or you can invest in yourself by actually buying a course or buying a book on doing that and then and starting a side hustle to build up that stream of income. This links onto my next step, which is all about passive income. Literally no one has an excuse not to have a passive income source because listen, what I have seen recently on TikTok is people will screen record my YouTube videos, make them into shorts. Their entire TikTok feed is just clips from my YouTube videos. And a lot of them will go viral because people have never seen me before, loads of comments, like millions of views. And the clips are always over one minute long. So then they get into the creativity beta program on TikTok. They are making bank. I'm not saying thousands per month, but a few hundred per month just from screen recording a video. They didn't have to sit down and plan my YouTube video. They didn't have to film it. They didn't have to edit it. And yet they're still making a passive income source where my videos on their pages are generating views. Listen, I respect the grind. And because we live in an age of social media, work smarter, not harder. Same goes for those fireplace videos people make on YouTube that are two hours long. You find a fireplace video that AI could literally generate for you, post it, ends up getting a million views. People watch it on loop all day long and you get so much money from YouTube ad revenue. And you are making money while you're sleeping and you had to put minimal effort into it. It was like a one-time five minute job. The next rich girl hack is money budgeting, which obviously I already mentioned. So using a budgeting app, recording your business expenses, if you're a business owner like I am. And really I have a calendar alert every single month where I sit down at the end of every month to really analyze what went out, what came in, how I could potentially increase my income the next month, what things I could step back from when it comes to spending, not to save, but just to redirect that money that may have gone on a few too many clothes then into reinvesting into my business or into the stock market to then build up my net worth. Because your net worth is the thing that's gonna make you a millionaire, not the amount of clothes that you own. And this link into the final rich girl hack before we get onto the homework chapter, which is net worth over bank balance. So let's use an example for this. Let's say there's somebody who's making 5,000 pounds per month. The average person would look at their salary and think 5,000 pounds, I can actually go out here and eat there and buy these clothes. A person who is trying to build long time wealth will look at that 5,000 pounds and think, how much of this can I invest to increase my net worth so it actually builds up my financial status rather than going into sinking funds. So when you spend money on going on a holiday or buying clothes or makeup or eating out, that is a sinking fund. That is money that you are never gonna get back, that you have completely lost. However, if you look at 5,000 pounds and you think 2,000 of my monthly salary, I'm gonna put half of it into the stock market, I'm gonna put another half into my pension, I might put an extra 500 into this business or whatever, or invest in that thing. That is the thing that is then building up your net worth. So you're keeping a lot of your salary to then maintain and grow your wealth over time because your investments will make you extra money. So for example, I have a calendar alert every single month which tells me the percentages of how much I'm going to put towards everything that I invest in and various different assets. And then I actually have a completely separate bank account which is a sinking fund where I will transfer a small percentage of money and that is the money I have said goodbye to. I don't think I have that money. I know I'm preparing to lose it. That is my holiday fund. That is my clothing fund. When you keep it all together in one bank account, you get confused and you think you have more money than you actually have and that is a very dangerous road to go down. And for those of you who don't know what a net worth is, your net worth is essentially your assets minus your liabilities and the total of that is then your net worth. So assets are things like money in the stock market, your savings account, real estate, 
pension, cars, jewelry, Birkins even. And then your liabilities are car payments if you didn't pay it off in full, your mortgage payments, your credit card payments, recurring costs like that. And lastly, chapter number four, your homework. Actionable steps you can start today to start entering your rich girl era in 2024. Step number one, I need you to apply for a credit card if you don't have one already. If you don't want to get an Amex, it's absolutely fine. Go to whatever bank you're using, you'll get a credit card for free. This is not free money. This is so that you can build up your credit score to do a favor to your future self. Step number two is to build up your financial literacy. So I have an entire folder on my Amazon storefront of financial books for you guys to check out. It's linked below in the description. So so Girls That Invest by Simran Court is a great one if you're an absolute beginner. Rich Dad Poor Dad is another great one. Think and Grow Rich is another great one. The four hour work week I personally loved because it helped me with my money mindset and completely switched where my priorities were in business and how to work and what kind of job to go after. That one I would say is more for entrepreneurs. Oh, and The Psychology of Money is also a great one if you don't want to buy these books. Um, I use the app Blinkist a lot. This is where somebody will read the book to you in your headphones. Homework task number three, you need to start building up your financial abundance mindset. And I would say do this through affirmations. You can Google these, you can make them up, or you can even go onto YouTube and type this up. And there will be people who repeat this. There'll be subliminals to help you get richer. There'll be phrases they say that help you rewire your mindset to help you develop a healthier, more abundant relationship to money. I personally would say it's better to make them up because then you can tailor them to make sure they are countering all of the limiting beliefs that you hold about money. The next homework task is to download the app Rise Up to make sure that you are on top of your monthly budgeting, you have your monthly forecast, and you can create better money boundaries. The next homework task is optional. You can start investing in the stock market with just a little bit of money if you have some in your savings. Try the S&P 500, make sure you do your own research because I am not a financial advisor. I'm just sharing what I personally do, but I am saying it's so worth looking into. And the last, and I would honestly say most important homework task is choose a method of investing that interests you and you feel like you would do. So let's take the stock market for example. Some people do Forex, some people do Bitcoin and stuff. I personally don't know anything about that. I'm not interested in doing that, but let's say you are. I want you to then go on Instagram and TikTok and search it until you find creators who specialize in that niche and their entire page is dedicated to educating people on investing in those ways so that once again, you can start building up your financial literacy and make sure that you are making informed decisions about investing your cash. Investing always risks you losing your money and that is important to remember and that brings us to the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new if you did comment down below let me know what you learned because it really helps me in improving my videos make sure you also check out all of the links below you can check out financial literacy books on my amazon you can follow me on my other pages my youtube my instagram my tiktok i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i will see you guys same time next week on friday for a brand new one i appreciate you bye